Hey, Joanne, we have a new buyer client and they asked, when should they apply for their mortgage? That's a great question. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. And pre-COVID, I would say that what oftentimes happened is people would go to a mortgage lender or a banker and they would ask them to get pre-approved. So they'd pull credit, look at their income, look at their assets, and they would issue a pre-approval letter. Mm-hmm. But post-COVID, in particularly in Concord, Massachusetts and the surrounding towns, we've been in a limited supply of homes available with an oversupply of buyers. Mm-hmm. And so we've been in a very competitive real estate market. So Joanne, what have we been seeing lately with when do people apply for their mortgage? So like Tom mentioned, traditionally, you would probably wait until you sign your purchase and sale and then go and apply for your mortgage. But with the change in the market parameters since COVID, we are talking with people and our suggestion is to chat with your recommended loan officer, whether we give you a recommendation, your parents give you a recommendation, your best friend, or somebody that you have a previous relationship with, chat with that person, and then it, and then you owe it to yourself to chat with at least one more, Right. okay? And the reason that we say this is because not only is mortgage are mortgages a diverse industry of offerings, you wanna make sure that you have the right fit with the loan officer for what your goals are for purchasing. And and our sentiment is that you should apply for a mortgage sooner rather than later. Right. So what's the catch? Like, so what happens if you apply early? If you apply early, sometimes the lender will ask for a financial commitment mm-hmm. because they're gonna run you through underwriting. Yep. And oftentimes you're gonna be locked into working with that lender. So that's the rate product rates you're gonna be getting. But the benefit is that in the old days, once you sign a purchase and sale and you apply for that mortgage, it's a two week timeline before they can even say you're a hundred percent committed mm-hmm. and you can definitely buy this house. So now in this competitive market, we're saying get that commitment. We call it a pre-commitment mm-hmm. right up front. So you do those two weeks ahead of time. So that if you find a great house that you want to buy, you can sometimes you can waive your financial commitment if you're feeling confident about it. Mm-hmm. You can do a one week commitment date, a two week mm-hmm. commitment date. There's a lot of cash in the market. So it makes you a buyer that can compete with cash. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's such a powerful tool that can put you in a great position to be successful mm-hmm. in the marketplace. And, and the lender, you know, the reason it's a risk for them is that they're putting you the man hours it takes to do underwriting. What's that take? What's that look like? I mean, so they need to collect all of your documentation. You need to have the the completed uh, application done and uploaded. And they need to go through all of your documentation with the underwriter. There's a lot of hours involved yeah. in creating this pre-commitment. But the benefit to you as a buyer is that if you have this pre-commitment, as Tom said, you can compete with people who don't have financing. Right. And the reason that we think that this is important is for two reasons. One is because it lowers the risk for the seller, right? So as listing agents, we love to see pre-committed buyers coming in with offers. And basically that person's loan, when you're pre-commitment, all it's subject to is a purchase and sale and an appraisal on a property. So it's basically your file is done. They just need to insert the address. And why that's important is because you've already done all of the heavy lifting up front and the risk is very low that something will come up in your financing. Right. Cause like, well, here's a perfect scenario that can come up when you're getting a pre-approval letter. So you're talking to the lender and you say, listen, I make $125,000 a year. Can you give me a pre-approval letter? Lender pulls your credit, look at your they look at your bank statements, everything lines up. But then it comes to find out when they look at your tax returns that you actually only make ninety thousand dollars a year and you get bonused out. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got bonus out last year that got you up to one twenty five. Mm-hmm. But the year before that, your bonus was ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So now you have two years. One year you made a hundred thousand. One year you made one hundred twenty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. All of a sudden, your ratios could be different. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a traditional marketplace, you're not finding this information out until you're three weeks past purchase and sale. Mm-hmm. And you could potentially be in a scenario where the lender says, oh my goodness, 
you no longer have the debt to income ratio to qualify to buy this property mm -hmm. because you weren't 100% truthful or you just didn't understand how your compensation got paid out. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do a pre-commitment, they find that out up front. Mm -hmm. And so when you're making that offer, you know with 100% certainty you can afford this property. And that the underwriter has already Looked rubber stamped, stamped it and yeah. they're ready to go. And the other cool thing that a lot of people don't know is that if you look at a house that is owned by someone who's been in the property for less than 10 years and they got a mortgage on it in the high likelihood that it was a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac mortgage, there are scenarios where if you're putting 20% down that you can get an appraisal waiver mm -hmm. because the, the loan, the property is already in the system mm -hmm. in the value. They're very comfortable with the value. Mm -hmm. So there are some tricks of this industry that if you know about them and you're mm -hmm. properly prepared, you can position yourself. Because what if you have a seller who loves your offer, but they need to be able to move in three weeks because they've already secured a property and time is more important than money. money. You know, that's where being prepared can put mm -hmm. you in a great position to secure your dream property yeah. without having to write. Because people always say, if a house is on the market for a million dollars, do I need to offer a million two to secure it? And we said, not necessarily. If you're a ready and able and willing buyer and a seller has a scenario mm -hmm. where they can't buy without selling and they have a house identified, they might be able to, they might be willing to take asking price mm -hmm. because they're willing to do that because the dream house is more important than the money. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, you know, the answer is we suggest getting pre uh, getting your pre-commitment underway right away as you get started. It's a it's a bit of a heavy lift up front. Um, we understand that and it's and there's maintenance to it yeah. too. So as the months go on, you need to continually be refreshing your documents with your loan officer. And it's another added step, but it's worth it because if you're ready to buy, you're ready when the right opportunity comes up. Nothing is worse than not being ready. Yeah, we've had that unfortunately <laughs> had that scenario happen to couples and we just want to avoid that as yep. much as possible. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for another edition of Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. And if you like this video, please subscribe and like it and join us for more. Cheers.